Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm now an Airbus pilot and in this video I want to talk a little bit about how the Airbus somewhat got demystified for myself coming from a lot of internet driven content before and then learning the actual airplane. So in this video I want to go about some of the big things that the Airbus is and that the Airbus isn't. Most certainly the latter one. So a lot on the internet seem to think that the Airbus simply is a flying computer. And while that is certainly true, we have to keep in mind so are the other commercial aircraft like Boeing, Embraer and so on. So even going back to the Boeing 737, if we just take a couple of, well, let's call it easy differences, then we can see in the Obert panel, for example, you've got a lot of these lovely push buttons down here in the Airbus. And based on my, let's call it, internet perspective before the type rating, I somewhat really thought like, okay, there must be a magic computer behind every of them and there must be so many different modes and so on. And while that is somewhat true to a certain extent, it is much easier to say that, well, a lot of the stuff simply is straightforward as well. So let's take it easy, for example. Let's take the APU bleed and compare the APU bleed in the Airbus with the APU bleed in the 737. So we can first of all make things very easy and just go over to the bleed page and we can see that with the APU bleed running it is always going to override the engines even though those are shut down at the moment. It is going to override the engines and the APU bleed has priority over them. So in the 737 you could not run the APU bleed at the same time as the engine bleed was uh, running at least when the engines were operating above idle thrust and for that reason you had that dual bleed light in the 737 which would illuminate at any point where there was a possible backflow of air into the APU bleed. Now Airbus is a little bit smarter obviously so they went ahead and constructed it in a way that if the APU bleed was turned on the computer would automatically shut down the engine bleeds so that a back pressure can't cure. Now this has two advantages. Number one, you can't have any back pressure into the APU. Number two, it means that whenever the APU is running, the engines are automatically disconnected from the bleed system and therefore you have additional thrust available, which makes it quite easy with a push of a single button to configure the airplane so that the APU can pressurize it and the engines have additional thrust available while in the 737 it would be a lot of switching on the panel with a lot of possibility for things to fail. However, that is pretty much all automation there is to the APU bleed push button. So if we just switch it off, it works pretty much like in the Boeing as well. So you flick it off, you can see it turn amber, now it's off. Easy as that. And this is how it works for most buttons. So if we take for example fuel pumps, then here as well they are obviously switched off at the moment since we don't have the engines running but it's really simple on and uh, off push button there and yes the computer might do a little bit of switching when the tank runs dry but we do have the same thing on the 737NG as well at least optionally it was there on the 737 I believe the first couple 800s didn't have them the later versions all of them had it that when the center tank ran dry the computer would turn the pump off automatically and that's pretty much what the Airbus does as well there is a little bit more advanced stuff like for example the landing gear lever if you're flying above 280 knots then it simply shuts off the hydraulic valves and you cannot lower the landing gear anymore which protects you from damaging it in flight while on the 737 as long as the system as long as hydraulic pressure is available you lower the gear lever and the landing gear is going to drop down so again a little bit of computer technology there but we have to keep in mind this is mostly simple stuff. It's not like there is a huge amount of automation behind it that would be so difficult to understand. So thinking back to the uh, thinking back to people talking about MCAS and how that affected the um, 737 because pilots simply didn't know about it. Nowadays I'm thinking, yeah, well, there is so much undocumented computer stuff in pretty much every airplane that I can't really blame Boeing too much for not having that documented. The only thing we can blame them for is not training crews adequately for what is going to happen in case of a stabilizer trim runaway and what kind of forms the stabilizer trim runaway might and encounter. So that is probably the uh, bigger difference there than some undocumented computer code 
because Let's be totally honest, even in the Abbas, we do know how the fly-by-wire works, we know how the airplane is going to react in case something happens, but we don't know the exact code behind it, we don't know when it is going to move which control surface into which direction. So when exactly how much elevator input do you need until the plane starts trimming and all this kind of stuff is stuff that pilots aren't really told because, let's be honest here, what matters for us is that we do this and move it around, okay? Let's do this and move it around. And then the airplane reacts to it, and the airplane reacts in a predictable manner. And that is all that matters to us in the end, isn't it? So, yes, lots of computers over there, but flying the airplane, let's be totally honest here, isn't too much different from flying the 737. The 737 is highly automated as well, even though people barely tend to recognize it. Alright, so... That's just a little bit of going over some differences between computers and Airbus computer in Boeing and ultimately differences in handling them. You can see you basically handle the Airbus in a very similar way how you handle the Boeing. It's just that there is a little bit going on in the background that makes things, let's call it, a little bit safer because frankly that is exactly what it is. Now there will be a dedicated separate video about the uh, flight warning computer and how all that kind of stuff works because it just is something that coming from the 737 I find um, rather difficult to compare to be honest with the Boeing because we just didn't have something like that in the Boeing 737. However there still was our master caution system and that is something that I will talk about a little bit but in the meantime I do hope you found this one interesting so stay tuned for that separate uh, video on the warning systems of the aircraft. That's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I do hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. Leave a like as it does help with the YouTube algorithms. And finally, if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to see you all again on the next one. And in the meantime, wish you safe flights in whatever airplane you might be choosing for them.